quiz me, which of the following joints cannot be examined with orthography? Uh, TMJ, elbow, hip, or the symphysis pubis. And if you did look ahead or you read the book, you will know that it is the symphysis pubis, which cannot be examined with orthography. All right, so what amount of negative contrast media is instilled during a knee arthrogram? So make sure that you review that, especially for the knee and the shoulder of the negative contrast material, how much is used. Also, what negative contrast material is, okay? So we know that it is five to seven of negative contrast media during the knee arthrogram. So, what is another another term for the T-tube cholangiogram? Is it operative cholangiogram, ERCP, delayed cholangiogram, or radiographic cholangiogram? So go back through those uh, PowerPoint slides and you'll know that another term for the T-tube cholangiogram is the delayed cholangiogram. All right, standard precautions must be followed during a T-tube cholangiogram. So are you going to follow standard precautions or are they um, some other precaution that you're going to use during that T-tube cholangiogram? And we know that we are going to use standard precautions for that T-tube cholangiogram. So what is the name of the special endoscopic procedure? I just showed you the name of the special endoscopic uh, device that is used during an ERCP. Is it a duodenoscope? Is it a cholangioscope, gastroscope, or pancreatic endoscope? And I showed it to you, so it's the duodenoscope. Okay, is used during the ERCP. The presence of a blank is often a contraindication for an ERCP. So contraindication when you're not going to use it. So when what is present that you're not going to do an ERCP. A duodenal ulcer, a cholelith, a biliary, biliary stenosis, or a pseudocyst. So make sure that you look in the book. Also go back to the PowerPoint slides. And if there's a pseudocyst, that's a contraindication for an ERCP. It will not be done. Okay. So which of the following is not a division of the uterus? So go back and um, look at those divisions of the uterus. Is it the body? Is it the fimbrae? Is it the cervix? Or is it the fundus? And <clears throat> when you go back and look, you'll know that a division that is not part of the uterus is the fimbrae. Okay, so know what those are as well. Um, follow up on that as far as a <coughs> uh, word to know. A hysterosalpineogram can serve as a therapeutic procedure for infertility. Therapeutic procedure for infertility. Is that true or false? And if you remember, it is true a lot of times it is therapeutic and does help with fertility issues. So when was the, what was the primary reason for not using an oil-based contrast medium for HSG? And I know this is probably talked about in the book, but uh, also in the PowerPoints that they don't want to use oil-based. Is it because of poor visibility? Is it increased risk of reaction? Poor persistence within the uterine or possible, possible pulmonary embolus. So out of these four, you're not going to use an oil-based contrast medium because it is a uh, possible pulmonary embolus uh, if using an oil-based contrast. So that's why they've stopped using the oil-based contrast. So what is the most common patho pathologic indication for a myelogram? So think about a myelogram. Is it a HNP, herniated nucleus propulsus? Is it trauma, malignant or benign lesions, or spinal cysts? So the most common pathological reason, and that is for a herniated nucleus propulsus. 
So the most common injection site for a myelogram, so back to your myelogram, where is that injection site for the myelogram? Is it C1, C2, L1, L2, L3, L4, or L5? And if you remember, we're going to go to L3, L4 for the most common injection site for a myelogram. Iodinated contrast medium is used for a myelogram, is no longer radiographically detectable after how long. So when you use this contrast uh, material for the myelogram, how long do you have until it's not um, detected on a radiograph anymore? So they have to get all of their procedure done. Um, what is the length of time that they have? It is 24 hours. Usually it's done within the day. All of the procedures are done and they're sent home. Um, so you don't have to worry about that 24 hour. You just don't want them um, at the end of the day and then have nobody for CT to follow up. So <clears throat> epiphysis, epiphysis, epiphysiodysis is the what? Um, so we know epiphysis and then the Odysseus, what are we talking about? Is it lengthening of a limb? Is it premature fusion of the epiphysis? Is it a removal of a torn cartilage? Or is it a surgical shortening of a limb? So make sure that you uh, review this word and uh, know its definition. And it is a surgical shortening of the limb. So what is the name of the special ruler used during orthorhinography? So we talked about that. Is it a Bell Thompson? Is it a Miller? Is it a Coventry Miller? Or is it a Miller Abbott? The name of that special ruler. And if we remember, it is the Bell Thompson ruler for orthorhinography. An exposure angle of 10 degrees or less is termed what? Is it termed tomography? zonography, uh, planigraphy, or stratigraphy. And that is tomography. So know that tomography is an exposure angle of 10 degrees or less. So which of the following tomographic exposure angles will produce the thinnest sectional thickness? So we talked about the thinnest sectional sections so is it is it the 10, is it a 20, or is it a 40? Okay, I know that kind of goes off the page there, but so let's do 8, 10, 20, 40. So which one of those angles will produce the thinnest sections? And if you remember, it should be 40. So the more arc we have, the more angle we have. If it comes down here, it comes down here, comes down here, comes down here, comes down here, okay? In all of those places, that's where you get the thinnest section slices, okay? So the greater the angle, the thinner the thickness, thinner the sectional thickness, okay? All right, that is it. Um, review these, study, and uh, reach out to me if you have questions.